guys welcome back to my channel um i thought the only way that i was gonna be able to do this is if i just popped out of bed set up the camera and just filmed like the thought of putting makeup on and like cleaning the background and all that stuff was just um yeah too much at the moment so i guess this video will be a 37 week pregnancy update and a bit of a yeah i guess just an update um so i am 37 weeks and five days um as you guys know the plan is for me to be induced at 38 weeks and at the moment my induction date is monday the 26th so i've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's about three days to go. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might know um, what happened or didn't happen a couple days ago. Um, so just a bit of background. I have a, I'm realizing now that I think my son's labor and delivery, which was only a year and a half ago, um, caused me a bit of trauma that I maybe didn't realize his um the, the whole process with him was very very fast i didn't recognize um that i was in like active labor until i was until i really was and the whole um drive to the hospital was very scary and everything was really fast um i was between eight and nine centimeters when i got there there was no time for any um pain management so I delivered him naturally which I found terrifying and not not enjoyable <laughs> at all um and yeah so I think that I ha I think I now have a fear of going into labor at home um or having a baby at home or having a baby on the side of the road those kinds of things I mean in the movies and stuff they make it seem like it's funny but it's not it's really not funny um and i just am one of those people i feel so much safer in the hospital than at home um especially because i'm a high risk pregnancy so i don't think even if i was someone that wanted to have a home birth it wouldn't be recommended for me um, also knowing that this baby is really big, it wouldn't be recommended for me either. So I'm just the type of person that I feel safer in the hospital. Um, so that leads me to two days ago. So today's Thursday. On Tuesday, um, I guess this also, um, I'm going to insert a clip from when I was in the hospital. So... I, for, I forget, I can't even keep track if I mentioned what happened. But basically, we went out in the morning. I keep, I kept telling myself I'm not, like this is it, I'm not gonna go out anymore, I'm not gonna walk a lot anymore, like I'm just gonna lay low now. On Tuesday I went out, went to Kmart, did a bunch of like last minute stuff, um, was in a lot of pain, like having a, a hard time walking. Um, came home, made cupcakes for Ellie's school for her birthday. <laughs> And then afterward just started having like pretty painful contractions. And I've always, obviously, obviously been bad at, at knowing or um, being able to keep track of them or knowing when they're real or not. Um, and then I think I'm to the point where the feeling of the contraction um, sets me into like a state of panic, which just makes it worse and makes it more hard, makes it harder to, um, kind of like, to, to really process because I'm so panicky. So Sam was out, um, with a friend, I forget what he was doing, or he was with his trainer, his personal trainer. And I had a big contraction that really hurt and felt like a real contraction, like period pain. 
and I called him and I said I think maybe we should go in and it felt like a good time Ellie was at school my parents were here um, to watch Jake so I thought let's go he came right home we got in the car and then I swear from what I remember I was having full-on contractions and I was in a lot of pain I couldn't talk um, I told Sam I'm just gonna close my eyes and breathe until we get there and I was just breathing through them but I was in a lot of pain and I was also completely panicked like like my anxiety was through the roof um, and like just like the time with Jacob that drive felt so long and so scary and when we got close um, because I, I had made this mistake with him, I thought, oh yeah, I can, I can walk, just park the car, and it was a disaster. I, ne I was vomiting everywhere, um, I couldn't walk, and yada yada. So I said, um, pull right up to the door this time, and get me a wheelchair. So he did that, we left the car there, which now feels so silly. Um, he got me a wheelchair, I closed my eyes, and just focused on my breathing until we got up to the to the labor and delivery ward they got us in relatively quick I would say maybe five minutes five or ten minutes they got us in put us in a room and like pretty much a delivery room and the first midwife I had her name was Taylor and she was really really sweet and I remember her I think I've either I had her before with one of my other kids um she was very sweet she could see how panicked i was i was crying i was um like i had no color in my face like just really really scared um so she hooked me up to the monitors she um checked my cervix and she said i was two centimeters dilated and that that was okay and she said that you know, because your your last baby came really fast. She said, I can go from two to 10 real quick, so don't be discouraged. Um, and then when she hooked me up to the monitor, she said, you're contracting really well. You're having four contractions every 10 minutes and they're strong. Um, so from what I remember, she was like, yeah, you're probably in early labor. So you're probably gonna, you know, have this baby. And all I could focus on was I just kept sort of asking in all different ways like are you gonna send me home like am I gonna have to leave or can I stay and she she from what I remember at the beginning she pretty much said yes she said um, because you're high risk and you're scheduled to be induced in a few days anyway she said we'll keep watching and if it doesn't progress on its own we'll just move the induction up today um, and get the process going today and I thought great and I like instantly felt so much better and if and I started to get excited and I started to feel comfortable and like happy and then of course my contractions died down <clears throat> um so then she said we'll check uh your cervix again in four hours and see if you've progressed at all so she said just chill just relax she got me um the the gas I didn't end up using it because it was like as soon as I got comfortable, the pain really died down, like died down a lot. Um, so I didn't end up using the gas at all, but it was very comforting knowing it was there. Um, so then in those four hours, I guess labor and delivery just got swamped and I could hear it. There were women screaming all around me like it, it was busy and I was taking up a whole room. And so her shift ended and it's so funny how much like a mid the midwife or I guess the nurse like impacts your experience and how you feel I felt really like safe and comfortable with um, Taylor the first midwife and then the second one came in and she pretty much right away was like we're really busy with like just making it's basically saying you're not really in labor like you're not a priority and she kept saying to me the safest place for you to be is at home and I thought well you're clearly not listening to me because I'm completely terrified of going home like I was in clear distress I would say I was bawling when she told me I had to leave 
Um, and Taylor, the midwife before, had told me, you know, you can refuse to leave. Like, they, the hospital cannot kick you out. And then I said that to this, to the next midwife that was sort of giving me a hard time. I said, well, I was told I could refuse to leave. Or I was told you can't make me leave. And she said, well, that's true. But she said, you can't keep this room. So you can go and wait, like, in the waiting room. And I thought, well, I know how this works. I'm 37 weeks and two days. I'm two centimeters dilated. Like, if they if they don't intervene in the labor, it could be weeks <laughs> or days. And I'll be sitting here until my induction on Monday. So I thought, like, okay, no, I'll just leave. And then I was pissed off. So <laughs> I left, like, with a lot of attitude. And I had been crying so much and my anxiety was so bad and I had a pounding headache at that point. Um, and yeah, and we left and we came home. Um, I took some strong painkillers, which they said I could do. I took them today as well, um, just to keep the contractions, just to keep the pain, the pain sort of at bay so that I don't freak out again. Yeah, and then we came home and it was really, really discouraging. And I know a lot of people like, I'm not, I'm not being induced for fun. I'm being induced because I'm high risk. I have high blood pressure and the baby is really big. And that's what the hospital wants me to do. It's not my choice. So anyway, that's what happened. And then to just update you guys on my pregnant, like my the update before this happened, um, when I met with the doctors, they agreed uh, a cesarean is not necessary, which is great, and kind of what I um, assumed would happen. And then, yeah, they gave me the induction date of Monday. So I just decided I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna get as comfortable as I can, I'm gonna stay as calm as I can, and I'm gonna not do anything. Like, I'm not walking any further than the bed to the couch because I find um, moving around, like, picks up your contractions, and, um, the feeling of the contractions, even if they are very early, um, really make me panic, so the more still that I stay, I find, um, the less, I'm still having contractions, like, I'm definitely in early labor, for sure. Um, so then the other thing is, induction Monday, but tomorrow I have an appointment at the hospital with uh, the midwives so I figured if I can at least make it till tomorrow I'll have them check me tomorrow and if things have progressed enough I'll make them admit me because um, they cannot turn me away again I figure <laughs> um, but that's also not ideal either because El uh, my my daughter Ellie's birthday is on Saturday so waiting till Monday would be better it's just a matter of keeping my anxiety in check until Monday. Um, and if you, if you have birth trauma, you, you might know what I mean. Um, labor is very, I, I guess I don't react well um, to pain. I guess the feeling of, of physical pain like sets off all other symptoms of anxiety and I just don't, um, I don't react well, I guess. So hopefully everything stays calm and the contractions stay away and Monday I can go in not in pain in a, with a clear mind and be induced the way I had planned and the way I had hoped. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, I am still nauseous. I'm still taking um, Zofran every morning. If I don't, I'll throw up. Um, I have no appetite. Um, wanting constant water all the time, which is kind of always the case. And then I'm just, I'm in a lot of pain, like my legs, my groin, uh, my stomach. Uh, very hard to get comfortable in bed. Uh, yeah, just in a lot of pain. So I'm, I'm really just trying to survive until Monday or until tomorrow, until Friday. So I guess that's it. Um, so like I said, I took a bit of a clip when we were in the hospital. So I'll insert that. Well, I'm trying to be quiet because it's awkward. I hope nobody hears me. 
so where do I start? Okay, so it's what's the date? October twentieth, Tuesday. I'm supposed to be induced on Monday. So I'm less than a week away. And this morning we went out, um, went and ran some like last minute errands and I was feeling pretty bad and like couldn't walk and stuff. And then when we um, came back, home I started having contractions so um, I am having contractions I am in labor but it's early labor I think so I've been here about three hours and when I first got here the contractions were pretty intense um, so much so that um, Sam like just pulled up and left the car and I got in a wheelchair. I think a lot of that is like anxiety for me. And then they put me in a room and they checked me and they said I was two centimeters dilated. So that was three hours ago. And then they, I explained to them like my anxiety about um, having the baby at home and my last labor going really fast and stuff like that so uh, they seem to understand that they seem to get that they said you know you're here now i felt instant relief as soon as i got in this room and then my contractions of course like got less intense they're still happening i'm having about four every 10 minutes they're still happening but i don't think i'm progressing so now the issue when i first got here they said um, what we'll do is we'll check you again if you haven't progressed. We'll maybe thinking, think about pushing the induction up to today so I don't have to go home. And, um, or just leaving it longer. But now they're saying labor and delivery is completely jam-packed full. The joys of a public hospital. So that they're not, um, they're not inducing labor like they're not putting anyone into labor because they're so busy so if i haven't progressed at my next check they would suggest i go home they said they can't make me go home um and so now i'm just considering because i think there's a good chance i haven't progressed i think there's a good chance i'm still two centimeters dilated but my anxiety is so bad that I don't think I should go home because I know as soon as I get home I'm going to want to come back and just for me the whole process of like driving here and waiting in the waiting room like it's, it feels like like I'm having a contraction now but it's not it's not that bad that whole process feels like days and it's so like I can't even describe like my blood pressure was through the roof when I got here and I was crying and I was like sweating um so I just don't think it's safe for me or the baby I'm tempted like I, I think I want to refuse to leave so in that case what they would do is just leave me here um and if I don't progress they'll they'll move it along once labor and delivery has calmed down. And I mean, it has to calm down eventually. I don't know, I feel silly. But if you've ever experienced having like a fast delivery, I do not wanna go home. I can't stress that enough, I'm terrified to go home. I feel so much safer here. But also I'm only, I'm only 37 in three days. 
So like there's a good chance that this is not even labor, like real labor. Uh, okay, I'll check in with you guys soon. They're gonna check my cervix again in an hour. And as long as I've progressed, like even, even if I'm three centimeters, like I think they'll let me stay. Well, e any, either way they'll let me stay. I wish I could get like instant feedback from you guys. But I really feel like I need to like not let people tell me what to do. And if like in my heart I feel like what I what is best for me and my baby is to stay here, I should do that. Because I am high risk and I should not I should not be having a baby at home or on the side of the road. Oh, I felt so positive like an hour ago. I should have came on and talked to you guys then. Anyway, let me just be I want this to be like how I wanted it to be. <laughs> um, Sam's just ordered himself some food. He's gone downstairs. I'm not hungry, I'm nauseous and I have a headache. I should eat, but I think it's just like I was so worked up earlier. Anyway, so this is the room. It's like, it's basically like a delivery room. So that's the bed I've been chilling in. Oh my vitals up there they had me hooked up for quite a while but they've taken me off now um so you can see like my contractions they're not regular but some of them are pretty strong they were happy with them before pretty much before they said um that labor and delivery got crazy busy they seemed like fine like they were telling me like don't worry you're here you're gonna stay here until you have a baby and now they seem to have changed their tune so I guess Jacob's delivery like traumatized me more than I realized. Okay, I'm gonna keep pacing around this room hoping to dilate my cervix even the tiniest bit. So I'll check in with you guys soon, bye. And I think you can tell, I mean you can probably tell now, but um, from the clip how scared I was and how how much I really didn't want to go home and it was like it's such a I, I felt like I was being kicked out and it felt scary like it felt like I'm telling them how bad I feel and how I feel like this amount of anxiety cannot be good for my baby and me and my blood pressure and to still be told like we need this room for someone else. I don't know, it was just not not, not a nice feeling. Um, but I get it, I mean, I, I'm not in labor, I wasn't in labor. So someone else needed it more than me, I, I totally understand that, it's just, I don't know, I guess it's one of those things where you feel like um, mental mental health is not taken into consideration the way like physical health is I don't know anyway so that's what's going on I'm trying to be positive there's a bit like I'm just looking around all I want to do is clean and I I'm not going to I'm gonna make myself just sit here and I will sit here until Monday if I have to all right well that's it I'm hoping I can still have the nice the nice labor that I'm hoping for and I can talk to you guys and and all that stuff so I guess that's it we'll see you that'll be it for me until until I have a baby so we'll see you in a couple days okay <laughs>